Hi, my name is Sarthak Bharadwaj and welcome to Letter of Law. Today I want to talk to you about Nani Palkewala. Nani Palkewala is perhaps the most widely recognized names in the legal fraternity. A brilliant advocate known for his persuasive advocacy, engaging writing and oratorial skills. He occupied the center stage for several decades and continues to inspire young lawyers even today. His contributions to the growth and development of law have arguably changed India's destiny. He appeared before the Supreme Court in most of some of the most important constitutional matters. Cases like bank nationalization, Keshwanand Bharati, Mandal Commission and so on. But how did it all happen? How did Nani Palkewala, who had a stutter while growing up, had no godfather in the legal profession and came from a very humble background, go on to become the greatest toyin of the bar. Ironically, India's greatest lawyer became one by accident. And this story, I've, I've read about the story in a brilliant book called The Courtroom Genius, written by two eminent senior advocates, Arvind P. Dattar and Solija Sarabji. So if you want a more fuller discussion on Nani Palkiwala's life and want to read about the cases that he was involved in, be sure to check this book out. It's great. So coming back to Nani Palkiwala, right from his childhood, he was a studious child and was a voracious reader. Now, in Grant Road in Bombay, there used to be an old bookshop where Nani Palkiwala would go and read books late into the evening. There, he developed a fondness for English literature and wanted to teach the language. And so he enrolled himself in St. Xavier's and obtained a degree in English literature. After that, he wanted to become a lecturer at a local college. But unfortunately for him, and thankfully for the legal profession, a candidate with prior teaching experience was chosen for the job. Now, it is interesting because Nani Palkiwala remained friends with the candidate who was chosen over him and had lunch with her on several occasions. I think this single incident spiraled his life and career to a whole different trajectory. Imagine what would have happened if he had got the job. <laughs> now, uh, at this point, he had completed his uh, master's degree too in English literature and his parents wanted him to take the ICS or the Indian Civil Services Examination which at that time was to be conducted in Delhi. But, and again by a strange turn of events, a severe epidemic broke out in Delhi due to which Palkiwala had to withdraw his application. And in something that can only be called cruel for him at that time, the government later decided to conduct the examination in Bombay too. But in hindsight, I'm sure he was glad that it happened. So at this point, when Palkiwala had exhausted all his options, he had uh, failed to become a lecturer and he could not write the Indian Civil Services examination, that he finally decided to take up law as a profession and enrolled himself in the government law college in Mumbai. Now, uh, Soli Sarabji and Arvind Dattar in the book write that had Nani Palkiwala become a lecturer, he would probably have retired as the vice chancellor of some university or as a civil servant, he would have retired as the chief secretary to the government. But law perhaps was written in the stars for him and fate steered him towards legal profession. And his rise to and his meteoric rise, in fact, to legal stardom is written in the pages of history and needs no recollection at all. So this was the story of how Nani Palkiwala accidentally became a lawyer. Now, before I go, if you've watched this video so far, I believe you must have found parts of it informative or fun. If that is the case, please consider subscribing to the channel for similar content in the future. And hey, don't be thrifty in using the social media currency of likes, shares, and comments. Thank you so very much. See you next time.